to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. So, so glad uh, that you're with us here today on a Monday. And joining me, starting off our week together, Mylon Yurkovich and Dr. Alice Benton. The last time you were on, Alice, you gave us that exciting news that Walter had, well, he had to be in a splint after being injured. And we're sorry about that. I hope he's healing well. Any other injuries you want to report? (laughs) Anything? No, No, other than that, we've been injury-free for a little bit. Oh, that is that is so good, and uh, Mylon, great to be with you. So thank you. Appreciate you. you well, it's so our much. Pro- we're just so happy to be a part of New Life, and you know I'm very excited because in just a very short while we're going to be together in Columbus, Ohio, for our upcoming workshop. We sure are, and I'm telling you, folks. Um, a lot of people say, "Well, we we worked on our marriage, or we went to counseling two times, or." Oh, we went to that thing uh, that that one night, and what we're doing is really different. Mm-hmm. We fly in counselors that can be trusted. We fly them in from all over just to come and do this. People that have proven themselves to be so good at what they do. They fly in, and then Mylon and I and Kay, we present things, and then you go to work. Uh, with some other couples with a Christian counselor. And so you have great content that you probably haven't heard presented this way before. You have a Christian counselor that's done this for a very long time. And you have the the other people that you meet, the dynamic of that group. And I've seen people uh, sit back and do nothing, and, and the group confronts them, and then all of a sudden things start to change. It is powerful, and I hope you'll look into it. it's called the intimacy in marriage weekend and a lot of times you're thinking oh god please perform a miracle for us and i i just wonder if god isn't there wanting to say to you oh listen you need to go and be part of a miraculous experience god often waits for us to do what we're waiting for god to do because it really does take some humility some uh, effort some courage to get help in a marriage and if you want that you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE that do you, is the do you know what happens when you put humility courage and perseverance and insight and work you put it all together you know what you call that what do you what do you get a slow miracle slow miracle yeah i believe in miracles slow miracles when people really work hard they create transformation and it's a slow process as miraculous i love it well you know given the choice between oh let's see i'm going to wait upon the lord for a miracle now in doing this i don't have to do anything or let's see i need to help create the slow miracle a lot of people choose the just waiting for god to do something and look don't yes we need to wait upon the lord but that doesn't mean that we need to passively let life just happen and we don't get to work usually john's great at saying john townsend usually the right answer is the tough one (laughs) that's you know when you're when you got some choices which is the toughest okay that's probably the one you need to take all right we're going to take a break we're going to come back and we're going to go to phones here at 1-800-229-3000 if you need some help in the midst of this you can't get through it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE that's our phone number we love love to help you. That's what we've been doing for 31 years, over 31 years right here at New Life. And by the way, you don't have to have a big problem to call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and say, I think I need a counselor or tell me about a life recovery group or some place I can go to get some help. It doesn't have to be the big deal. But boy, I'll tell you, when you humble down and get some help, the smallest deal can be dealt with by a powerful awesome God. We'll be back after this. God pulled me out of the gutter of my life that I was living in. I have done a lot of work over the last 40 years 
This is the first time I've ever felt love. I've had such a wonderful weekend here, and for the first time in a long time, I've felt at home. And the Lord has set me free from my mother's story about me not being good enough. The New Life Finding Freedom Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, September 20th to the 22nd. We're going to talk about forgiveness and codependency. We're going to understand that family of origin, the unhealthy reactions to it. We're going to talk about the cycle of shame and surrender and developing the plan that moves us forward. There'll be eight teaching sessions and six small group sessions. To register or to learn more about the Finding Freedom Workshop, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. I am living a new life and I believe that I have the resources and tools to continue that. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Let's go to our phones. we got some great calls lined up here, I know, because we have great people that listen to us. We love, love when people call us and get some help, but it's not always easy. Let's go to James from Riverside, California, listening. Great station, KK. L.A. Hey there, James. How are you? Hi, Steve. I'm doing I'm doing pretty well. Um, what's happening to, to here go today? go through, what's, what's happening is that uh, between the ages of 3 and 14, I was a victim of sexual abuse. And Who did that? Many Who did that it? God has done. That was my mother. Sexual abuse by your mother. Wow. That, my mother. That's rough. Mm-hmm. That's rough. What have you done uh, to to deal with that? That's... Well, I I have gone to counseling to deal with this, mm-hmm. and it really helped to open up some doors. And I know that I still have more work to do. Mm-hmm. There's many there's many things that uh, God has shown me since, and has brought great healing. Great. And and the thing is, is that through this, I also know that just because of my brokenness, that I would be passing some of these attributes off to my sons. I have three sons. They're from the ages of 21 to 26. And I want to tell them my story. Mm-hmm. This way they also know, even not just, not just from the abuse, but other things that I had fallen into that were not good mm-hmm. in, in life choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so and my question was, do I tell them... It was my mother, and she is still alive. Mm-hmm. Okay, here, here's one thing I want to um, just talk to you about before you go further. Mm-hmm. I'll, let, uh, I'll let Alice and Milan answer that question. But sometimes, uh, as a parent, we'll lump everybody in together. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so I would just ask you before you decide to tell the boys that you evaluate each one as an individual because um your actually your youngest could even be more capable of hearing this and dealing with it than let you know your your oldest for whatever reason do, do you see mm-hmm. what i'm saying you it a lot of times you I just want to look at each situation and say you know what if i do that boy that is just going to be for him at this time, what he's going through, whatever it is, not the right thing. And mm-hmm. I, that's just a little little uh, piece of wisdom there that might be helpful. But um, let's start with Alice. What do you think, Alice, about him telling and revealing this was their grandmother? James, I think it depends on a couple of things. It sounds like your goal is to reveal this to them in order to protect them from repeating some similar mistakes or being hurt in a similar way. Is that right? That's correct. And, and that, that's a noble goal. And so I think that uh, pr- um, giving some of the information to them is probably wise in order to protect them well. What is your mom's role in their life? And, and just briefly, what has been the, the state of her own healing and reconciliation with you? Well, um, when I spoke to her years ago, when I was in my 20s, um, she said she was sorry, 
but then as she spoke with my dad about it, it her attitude was completely different, and there has been really no change from that. Hmm. And it's kind of like she didn't doesn't remember or anything in that respect is what she says. Mm-hmm. Um, and she went around asking my siblings if something ever had ever happened, and they all said no. But then I come to find out something happened also to one of my siblings, and that was revealed. Yeah. It's like okay, okay, yeah. You know that's that's what's happening there. And so the role that she plays, it's it's a, it's a minimal role that she has. We'll see her every now and again at some family functions. Did you ever uh, protect them from being alone with her? You know, there was a t- I, we did with the older, uh, the younger ones, but the older one we we didn't. We weren't we were naive <clears throat> and uh-huh. and thinking differently. But we 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 we, did, we have talked to our older one, and he doesn't say anything. Anything had happened, uh-huh. um, but I will say they do know my story. Uh, mm-hmm. part of my story of the sexual abuse, so they are aware of that. I have talked okay. to each one individually just of what happened with me, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and just understanding that my brokenness is where some, sometimes I wouldn't be able to stand up for you. Yeah. You know, okay. and, and protect them, and just in other life situations. J- James, in the way you talked about your oldest, it sounded like he maybe wasn't asked directly if his grandmother ever crossed sexual boundaries with him. And I do think because... We did. You did ask directly. Okay. Yes, okay. we did. Okay. It, so that seems like that would be someone you could share this with. What do you think, Alice, or not? Well, y- even as it pertains to your your own grandchildren, James, I, I think that they need to know that there's a perpetrator in the family that has not gotten help and hasn't really admitted to the, the abuse that she perpetrated. So p- people, and even if she's older, people could still possibly be in danger from her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, James, well, I, I love your line yes. of questioning. I appreciate it. I respect mm. it because it shows responsibility to protect as well as I loved what you said originally that there are other things that you picked up along the way that were not solid or could have even been detrimental to your kids with respect to speaking up or protecting them or or perhaps passivity or a lack of assertiveness, whatever the case may be. I want to explain my behavior to you. Um, I think that is brilliant, and I appreciate and respect that this is what you're inquiring about. Um, Kay and I have a philosophy that we teach that, uh, and a belief that by the time a child is an adult, and I love Steve's point, how adult is each of those grown sons from 21 to 26? Because, you know, you could have one of them that's 23 going on 16, and so. But by the time a, a person is a true adult, though, we believe that all the family secrets should be revealed so that people can understand the family system, why things have happened. A lot of lights go on when people find these things out. I, I think Steve's point is well taken as well with respect to telling them each individually and making it a special occasion to do that. But I think also, as Alice said, to even protect future generations and the possibility of grandkids coming up, we do not know what people will do. And this is really, really hard stuff, uh, James. Um, And Mm -hmm. I want you to know my heart breaks for you Mm -hmm. to be from from age, you know, three to fourteen to have your mom mistreating you in a sexual manner is just a very tragic way to start a life. And it's mm-hmm. going to affect your personal relation, sexual relationship with, with your wife. It's going it, to uh, so many things will be uh, brought into your life. So the process of cleansing, uh, working out, rooting out the things, and then sharing it with the next generation is is very admirable. So we're really uh, voting on you sharing this for a lot of different reasons. Um, not the least of which uh, to protect your grandchildren, you know, when that comes along. And, and I think it is, it's a good age. We have some people, they want to tell things to their kids when the, <laughs> the kids are 9 and 10, and, you know, it's just not, not the right time. Alice, you had something there? 
Well, it makes me think of James, your siblings, if this has not really even been talked about much amongst your siblings, mm-hmm. and if they have children and there are other mm-hmm. grandchildren that are yes, also exposed to right. grandparents, mm-hmm. it makes me think your father maybe turned a blind eye to some of this or mm-hmm. didn't intervene or didn't protect you, and your mother perpetrated. I may or may not be right about that, but these are not safe grandparents Mm-mm. to be ar- They're still not safe to be right. around. And I'm so sorry you're in the position to have to reveal this to anybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I, I I agree, and that's why I was looking for some wisdom in doing this. Here's one other what thing, James. Conversa- here's one other thing. Just let me say this: a lot of people play the "I don't remember" card. I've heard yeah, that twice this week mm-hmm. already. Yeah. I don't remember, mm-hmm. or I just woke up and this was happening, or I took an Ambien and uh, I don't remember what happened after that, or I just don't remember. Mm-hmm. And so that's a card that a lot of people play. And so I just want to say that your mom played that card is right on cue. So James, and let me tell you this: when uh-huh. when somebody plays that card, James, here's the thing that I think is really helpful. Well, let me tell you what happened, mom. Here's what happened. Mm-hmm. Now, now, do you remember? Yes. And of course, you'd probably say no, and then say, well, let me tell you, I remember, and you've never come to me to try to make it right. And I just wonder if in these years there might be something in you that would want to make this right. And in the meantime, I would protect every child I could from her. Alice, mm-hmm. one more thing? Well, I just think if you state it in love with your goal in mind to your children of because I care for you and I want to protect you and I need to find out if anything has happened to you, mm-hmm. that's why I'm revealing that I was abused, sexually abused by my mother because I want to make sure that I get healing for, for, for you and that I protect you and your children from future harm. Start simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your, your and there was analysis... A, there was Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, there was another thing, too, on this, was that um, I did want to speak to my mother again. Mm-hmm. And I, if with the goal of not to slam her down, not to do anything like that, but to just say, listen, I want to know, let you know what it is that you did. And I, I want to give her, I would like for her to have the opportunity to repent from that. You know, but well, it doesn't mean if she doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm holding on to that. It's just this that opportunity, you know, because James, that's a just, gift. That is a, a gift to give to her, bringing her the truth in love. Um, it may pull her yeah. back from the brink, and and maybe she will open her eyes up and get the help that she also needs. But you have to do mm-hmm. it with a very realistic expectation. There's a really good chance she isn't going to respond in the way that you think would be helpful to her. I completely agree with that. Yeah. I'm very clear on that. Yeah. You know, um, and look at and, what and, uh, look at look at your life, my friend. Look at the things that you're valuing and um, what is it that kept you from letting this be an excuse in your life to be hopeless and helpless? What do you think is the key if somebody else is listening who've been through what you've been through? What the key for me has been that I needed I needed the Lord to really restore me mm. Mm. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it took tears mm. to do that yeah. and I know that when well, you know I've heard of the three T's you, you, you talk the tears and the time mm. but it's being willing to go there and that's where I found that God has really done a lot of restoration in me dealing wow. with my abandonment issues, being deserted, feeling alone, all these things that, is, that has happened. And I know in the last 10 years, God has really opened the doors in this thing. And, and, and I want to give a, a shout-out to Mylon and Kay, because we teach the how we love in, mm-hmm. and, 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 and in our church. And mm-hmm. I tell you, it just has such a great impact. It had a great impact with me, mm-hmm. and, I, and I know it has a great impact with others. Thank but you. I know what God has done in me. I've been able to pass that on with other people and to have that compassion and sympathy and understanding of where they're at and walk mm. them through. It's been a very powerful tool that God has used. And I'm really Wonderful. thankful for that. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just been awesome. 
Oh, man. And you know, um, one of the great joys of my life is having a radio program where I was able to talk about and feature what they do because it is absolutely life-changing and it's powerful and you're affirming that. So God bless you. And Thank um, you. Man, I, I'm grateful for this call, I'm grateful for you and what you're trying to do. Really do believe your motives are just right where they need to be. Thank Final, you, James. Anything you want to say as we close out? Well, you know, along James's point here, you know, even someday to say to his mom, oh my goodness, what what happened to her when she was a yeah. little girl? How in the world? That compassion he was talking about. Mm-hmm. We'll be back. My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with, and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this, and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change. Yeah, that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here, and I think it is a, a good time for uh, Larry to come in and uh, Larry Sonnenberg and talk to us because let me tell you, uh, the joy I have in my heart right now is over uh, this radio program having a place that someone like him could call and other people that will never call could hear and, and then also, as I said there, able to, to present life-changing information, like from Mylon and Kay, that maybe people wouldn't know about if it wasn't for the program. We need people's help, Larry. Tell us about that. Well, we, the help that we're looking for really is uh, people to support us on a regular basis, and we do that through Club New Life. You know, we love one-time gifts, and we uh, know that some people need to test the waters. They need to see if they can really trust us and how we handle support and, s you know, et cetera. But we're looking for folks who on a one-time basis can, or on a regular basis, would commit to $30 or more a month. And we've got a great um, great thank you gift. We have a eight-book uh, eight set of, of uh, the best of the best. These are books that our radio hosts have written. That's just a thank you when somebody... Uh, calls and makes a makes a commitment to be a part of Club New Life. And so I want to encourage folks to take a look at that. I also want you to know there are great benefits of joining. But when the club grows, when the monthly resources grow, the urgency of me coming in the radio and saying, like I did a couple weeks ago, we're $25,000 short. Um, we don't have to do that if we can get Club New Life growing. 
And the reason we do this is because it makes a difference. These phone calls, the, it's painful to hear what people are calling about. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's so wonderful that they're getting help and life's changed because of it. One well, let me just tell you, every now and then I get pressure. Why, why do you do the radio program? Why don't you just do your workshops and stuff? And it's so expensive and all this. But it is a powerful, it's, it's the most powerful thing we do. It's our ministry. We want to continue to do it as long as we can. Go ahead, Larry. Lady writes, if it wasn't for New Life, what I learned about sexual addiction, I don't think I would have had the knowledge about the battle or the courage to insist my husband go to Every Man's Battle Workshop. Mm -hmm. I know it was God's perfect timing. I feel that our marriage has been saved. I'd come to the point where I wasn't even sure I wanted to continue our 37-year marriage. Mm. But I know the Lord hates divorce. When he returned and confessed to something that I could never have imagined, I was overcome with compassion for him that I know came from the Lord. I feel like a new person. He looks like a weight's been lifted off of his shoulders. I know he has a lot of work to do. I'm so thankful he's continually in touch with the other men that he met that weekend who are fighting the same battle. I feel like our marriage is healed by the Lord through New Life Ministries. That's why we do what we do. And she went on to say, the last thing I want to I want to commit to joining Club New Life. So if you can believe in the, the changes that happen, if you want to be a part of helping lives change generationally as well as across the board influence, please help us, support us, call and make a gift, and thank you everybody who is doing so. Mm. Amen. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That is the number to call. Let's go to Christine, Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, Christine, W-E-Z-E is that great station she listens to. How can we help you today? What's going on? Christine? Well, I don't know. Christine, are you there? Oh, it was on mute. Yes, I'm here. Okay. It was on mute. How can we help? Okay, so um, I'm coming. I would like to know. My question is, I would like to know how to deal with a husband that criticizes everything at all times. Um, and that's my husband was not always like that, but lately that's how he is. Doesn't matter what I say, what my daughter say, he always look for the bad in it, something bad in it to criticize. So I tried many yes. different times, uh, different ways to deal with, and lately mm -hmm. I'm just cutting conversation really short to try mm -hmm. to avoid being criticized because I'm getting tired of it, and I think it's, mm -hmm. it, it is getting to me, and I'm afraid of how much it's getting to my daughter. I, I just don't mm -hmm. know how to deal with it. I don't think I'm dealing with the, the, the right way. Is but he a believer or not a believer? Found. Is he a Christian he or is. not? He is. Yes, he is. When you say to him, please don't be so critical or negative, what is his response to that? This, uh, oh, yeah, 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 everything for you is criticism. He, he mm -hmm. turns around if I'm oversensitive. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, let's start with you, Alice. What do you think she could do in the face of constant criticism? Proverbs 19:19 19, 19 comes to mind for me, Christine, that a man of great anger must pay the penalty, otherwise we end up rescuing him again. Um, and and I, I, I want to encourage you to apply this by letting him know outside of a time he's criticizing you. I don't know if I'm oversensitive or not, but I, it's hard for me to even talk with you for very long because I am so worried that you're going to come back with a criticism. So I wonder if you and I could go get help for this. If we could go talk to a professional about it to get assistance. Depending on his response, if, he, if he's open to that, there's great hope. If he's not open to it and won't look at it and still points all the blame on you, then you might have to consider how you're gonna start protecting your heart from him. And that may be as simple as, well, if you're not willing to get help or you, if you can't see that it's you at all, I have to step away from the conversation and even walk out of the room to protect my heart when you're critical. And I have to teach our daughter to do the same because it's starting to weigh on her as well. Mylon, any thoughts here? Well, yes, everything. Let's just go to, let's go to the break. And, and okay, we'll come back. after the break, I'll share something. Yeah. New Life Live, we'll be back. For 
most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Arterburn here, and uh, we're dealing with this uh, whole issue of criticism. My, my good buddy Dave, I mean, whenever he does a workshop, one of the things that he says is uh, there's no place for criticism ever. And uh, people say, well, what about constructive criticism? And he says, well, that's just criticism with a smile. Well, what do you think here? What, what's the answer when a person is being literally victimized by constant criticism? Well, um, I agree with everything both you, of you said. Um, there's another approach, which is, and one of the things that Christine said that I really, really appreciated was she said, he's not always been this way. And so mm. that tells me something that there's somehow been a change. And typically what I do when I see a, any kind of adverse reaction, whether it's reactivity, anger, a flare in emotions, uh, some outburst or some reactive uh, uh, behavior, I just stop and I look at the person and I, said, and I say to them, something hurts in sight. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it got there. Mm -hmm. but yeah. something hurts inside I can tell by your behavior do you want to tell me what hurts and because I'd like to know you see we can we can react to the the presentation or the behavior or we can go beyond that and say what's going on inside because people that are stressed people that are depressed people that are anxious uh, people that are struggling on the interior which is our our suke, our soul, if they're struggling in their heart, mind, and soul, they lash out at the, at the nearest uh, lightning rut. And so I would just sit down. Now, Alice said something very important. And you do this at a non-angry moment or a non-critical moment. You do it when the person is in a, in a way that they're so, sort of calm and you're in a better place with the person. And, and I always start off with, can I ask you a question? Hmm. And Good you, start. Yeah. It is, because can I ask you a question? And then something hurts inside, I can tell, by all the things I see. And do you want to talk about it? And, 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 to, to and that, say, get, that takes us to a very different place. But, but to say, honey, I, I don't know that I can handle any more of this, and I want to talk to you about it, and then... I, there's got to be something well, inside well, you. Well, I don't lead with that first part. I do them in reverse from okay. that. I start okay. off, 
Okay, then with. I wait and see what they say. Then I say what you just said and what Alice said. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I, if you don't want to talk about this, that's okay. And, and I can't read your mind. You'd have to tell me what's going on, on the inside, but let me be clear. I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. You see, this, yeah. is, this is just unacceptable. And so something's got to change, and I'm just I'm, – I'm trying to be inquiring, but I'm also going to tell you this isn't working, and I'm not going to do it anymore. So what do you think about that, Christine? Could you approach him that way? Do you think it could make a difference if you did? Um, I can try, and I truly appreciate all what you guys had because it, it, he went through many changes many health issues in the past Mm -hmm. couple of years Mm -hmm. and i do understand and that's why i always try to see what's the best have a lot of patience and the best way to approach because i know that he is hurting Mm -hmm. and i know that many times he doesn't know how to deal with because those are not small changes that he can just go back to what he was before all these health issues and many things and this makes him really frustrated and angry so I try to understand and I try to work with him the best possible way. But um, well, what, I, I what don't is the, know what are the way imp- What's the impact? What's the physiological impact of his health issues? How's he different? So he had uh, many um, issues, heart issues, and he had a mm. heart transplant about two and a half years ago, which wow. he's much better than what he was before. He's doing great considering the issues that he has. He had, but he's not 100% back what he was before, and he has a real hard time understanding that he's great, but this is his new 100%. So there are a couple of yeah. things that he has to adapt, there are a couple of things that he has to change, and he put, puts all his energy just trying to go back and do exactly everything the way that he did before, and when he sees that he cannot physically, he cannot keep up, he cannot do everything the way that was before, that's when he gets frustrated. And then every victory that either myself or my daughter has or anything we have to share, he always tries to minimize. And I know that because minimizing, he might feel better because he feels bad about himself. But it's not my fault. But look, didn't they tell you that over the next five years after that surgery that depression is quite common in, in someone who has any kind of major procedure on their heart, much less a, a transplant? Didn't they tell you that was something you're going to be facing, he's going to be facing? Yeah, they tell us, and they offer all kinds of resources, and I'm open uh-huh. to all the resources. And he says that he's open, and he did uh, use some of resources. He went on therapy, occupational therapy, and psychologist. But um, in front of everybody, he always put that face that everything is all yeah. right. Right. And then behind closed doors is not really like that. Yeah. And so I would imagine that's part of or most of the criticism. And, and the thing is, you're, you're alive. You're supposed to be so grateful that you have a second chance. And then Ex- and that's you're how depressed. I feel. Yeah, it's like a double, a double bind there. Alice, any thoughts here for her with him? Christina, I feel pretty protective of you because a heart transplant, of course, that's major. And it's an explanation for why he's struggling, but it certainly is not a justification. And so no. I understand your quandary of trying to figure out how to love him well. A- and loving him well includes not tolerating the criticism. So mm-hmm. I really hope the wording that we've given you gives you a jump start to make the attempt with him, see how he responds, but then be bold in protecting your heart and protecting your daughter's mm-hmm. heart. That's a way to love him too. Right. Yeah, and you know, the Bible talks about the ultimate heart transplant where it says he will take out your stony, cold heart and replace it with a heart of flesh, a heart that cares and isn't criticizing well i'm going to send you a copy of take your life back i hope and pray that that's going to be helpful uh, to you there i'm glad that you called john dallas texas kwrd is the station hi there uh thanks for taking my call Uh, my question is uh, my wife is cutting herself and threatening to hang herself what should i do about that well how long has she been doing that uh, she, this started um, two months ago when I 
confess my use of pornography to her. I've been getting help for that, but she has been declining since then and has been, uh, she started cutting herself about three months ago, but it kind of has escalated over the weekend. Okay, so what help have you gotten for her? I've uh, I've joined a Seven Pillars group. I have a accountability for her. partner. For I'm her, what kind of help for her? A, another program that includes a biblical counseling session uh, on a weekly basis. Okay, I'm talking about her. What kind of help? She's in trouble. What kind of help have you guys gotten for her? She has not gotten any help. She has in the past been betrayed by a, a a counselor and is reluctant to go to counseling. Oh boy. Okay. Mylon, you want to start us here and then Alice, uh, I mean, this is serious. Well, John, uh, first of all, I think uh, the link uh, of her onset of these behaviors and your revelation about your porn um, involvement is important to understand. Ultimately, your wife was devastated, we can understand, and if she's been somehow betrayed by someone else or violated in some way, this is reaching down also into her history and reaching down into uh, a series of past pains, and they're all coming up right now all at once, and I think you need to realize that this is bigger, perhaps, perhaps, than just the revelation of your porn problem. Uh, often, student observation. Yes, uh, she and I both have uh, childhood sexual abuse oh. issues. Oh, and and so you know, I would. Uh, I, so so, if you will, her behavior is understandable. I'm I'm not at all condoning with what she's condoning what she's doing, but it, but the desperation that this this sweet lady is feeling is just well, her behavior's display the desperation what i would suggest you do john is that you create an intervention within your home that you bring people into your home um, that are friends people who care uh, people that want to create an intervention to help her because if you just tell her she needs to go do something there will be a reluctance so that's just one idea that we can build from Oh, in this call, and others may, Alice and, and Steve may have different opinions, but yeah, we, we have we'll, to we'll do something that. here, and we'll do that right after the break. Right. You don't want to say, oh, wow, I should have done this. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylon and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Last year after Every Man's Battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them 
do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. We're talking with John, and he's uh, really working on his sexual integrity here and talked to his wife about it, and, and it's really produced a, a tough, tough uh, outcome here for her. Uh, Mylon, Alice, wh- what is the best thing for him to do in the short term? What do you think? John, if you went to your wife after this call and told her, I know that my revelation has caused you immense pain, and I believe what you say. I see that you're cutting, and I believe that you're thinking about hanging yourself. I I talked with New Life. They hooked me up with with a counselor. Would you go with me today to get help? How do you think your wife would respond? Uh, I think she would say you can go, but she would not. And if you if you pushed it to say, if you aren't willing to go with me, I am so concerned for your safety. I, I'm going to get somebody here to help you if you won't come with me. And it will go better if you'll come along with me. If you pushed it like that, what would she say? I'm not certain of that, of the answer to that. Okay. I think I think you need to, to move on this quickly because her, her threats... Um, it, obviously, it may be true. So if she if she refuses to get help, you have a couple of options. If you call 911 and, and explain the situation, I think my wife is suicidal, um, and I'm not sure what to do, and she won't get help. There are a couple of different teams in different states call them different things, but there are, are trained mental health professionals who will come to your home if she won't leave, mm-hmm. and they will... Uh, talk to her there they're at, they'll ask her questions and if she's at such a high risk of harm they can take her to the hospital they can hold her and get her the help that she needs even if she refuses if they see enough signs of danger um, they can intervene on her behalf and what's your reluctance to do something like that is it that you know you feel like i cause it or it'd betray her again or what are you thinking there we want to help you with that Yes, I I do feel like uh, that's a a type of betrayal that uh, I'm I'm uh, it's another type of betrayal that I I'm, I'm doing by like yeah. throwing her under the bus so to speak. But it isn't. But you're throwing it's her saying, under the, you're throwing her under the bus if you don't do anything. See, right. and right. and what's true about this situation is you have to be self disclosing to even say to the people at the county services who offer assessment services to you and that this was precipitated by my revealing to her that I had a porn problem. But what it did is it pulled up her entire history of sexual trauma and betrayal. Now, it is a disservice and betrayal to not do something. Here is truth, and to exercise with truth is the right thing to do. And, and don't yeah. do, do it secretly. Give her no, these various yeah. options and yeah. let her know, these, this is what we can do, and this is what I will do if, if you won't go with me, if you won't get the help, because I, I, I need to make this right. I made this wrong. I need to make this right. At some point, okay. and it may be after she gets very well, at some point she's going to see that you went from disregarding the value of her mm-hmm. to wanting her to valuing her so much you saved her life if you didn't value her you just let her destroy herself or stay sick but you aren't doing that and at some point that's going to mean something to her that you called a program you took their advice you intervened may not like it in the short term but one day she's going to say wow he did really love me even though i felt like he didn't or the betrayal yeah but he he made some changes and so it's just all upside when you do the tough thing so i'm hoping and praying uh, we can help you do that Um, you hang on we'll try to find a counselor or maybe a resource there that could help you right there in dallas you know one of the advantages of of calling the county services for a mental health assessment um, is they aren't people in uniforms that walk into the house. They are people that are skilled and trained 
yep. evaluators and they come in to assess. And they know so, how to make it safe. Well, they, they do, yes. and, and, and just their presence in the home is different than officers. So to call your county and to ask what are the services that are offered, uh, but if you ever feel as though there is some imminent danger, then you call 911 as quickly as possible and tell them, mm -hmm. as Alice said, what's really happening. And yeah. uh, I'm, we're okay. really sorry you're going through that. That mm. is really hard. So tough. And, and folks, please join us in prayer over, mm -hmm. over this yeah. family, because I don't doubt right. the spiritual warfare that's going on as well. God, Another please question. protect them. Mm -hmm. So we're at the end of the program. I, I'm going to encourage the folks that are hanging. I wish I'd gotten to you. We're here tomorrow again for another couple of hours. So call us back or just uh, hang on or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let us help you there. 1-800-NEW-LIFE is the place to call. Uh, if you need something, we can give you a tip sheet on the way to handle things. We can find a counselor. We can find a resource for you. Let you know that Friday in Houston is every man's battle. Guys, this is, this is the time to act, is, is where you've got an opportunity to change your life forever. It's right now. You pick up the phone. At least look into it. And when you do, you know, you find out there's scholarship money available. Uh, there are people that want to help you. And then you're able to be free and clear and clean the rest of your life. That's what we want for you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Finding Freedom is the 20th of September. It's here. So sign up and get free, whatever it is that's causing a problem for you. Our 12 Steps to Happier is October the 5th in Irvine. Intimacy in Marriage, October 25th. Now, you know, we can't do this without you. We need your help. And I want to send you a gift if you can help us. A gift of any amount. It's a brand new product. It's called this, Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles. Now, this is a book to teach kids the truth of the Bible. There are uh, 100 Bible stories in here told by a 12-year-old, Kirby McCook, who teaches a Sunday school class. And here's the subtitle, A 12-Year-Old's Take on the Totally Unboring, Slightly Weird Stuff in the Bible, Including Fish Guts, Wrestling Moves, and Stinky Feet. This book is the answer to everything. If you're a grandparent, not only do you look cool, but you teach your kids the truth about Jesus Christ, that he didn't just show up in a manger one day. He's been here from the beginning of time. And it's our way of saying thanks to you. You help us. We're going to help you look like a hero to a child, a grandchild, a niece, nephew, anybody that's between, let's say, 8 and uh, 12. This is a great way to get the truth of the Bible into them like has never been done before. Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles, our way of saying thank you. You call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and a gift of any amount. Now, Mylon, I want to finish up the program uh, by talking about you, but let, let's just say this. The headline of our marriage conference in October, what would you say is the headline uh, of a person who's, who doesn't know? What is this about? I, what would you say is the headline? Two things. Number one, <laughs> Kay and I are going to present, and you will present, life-changing truths that take a couple and have them go back and look at the historical platforms upon which their relational struggles are built. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. don't look historically at our history, then we are missing the boat by just trying to change the present. When we understand the past, then we can begin to change the present because we understand why we do the things we do. Number two, they will meet in a small group with a trained therapist and three or four other couples, and that small group is dynamic and capable of helping to create a very positive influence of friendships, fun, and support. All right, it's it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE to hear about the Intimacy and in Marriage Intensive. And I'll tell you, it's for two types of people, those that have tried nothing and those that have tried a bunch of stuff and it's not getting better. You call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But you don't have to need a workshop to call that number. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let us help you. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you. But you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.